Hey guys, Wayback Rewind here. Today I want to tell you about the first ever VCR. It was introduced by Sony in 1971. Originally intended for the home market, it was a dismal failure, but it found great success in the television broadcast industry well into the 90s. I'm going to bring you the story of Umatic here on Wayback Rewind. Videotape was invented in the 1950s to replace the film-based kinescopes. These were used to time delay broadcasts to the West Coast. Early videotape consisted of two-inch quad tape on open reel-to-reel -reel machines. Quad was the industry standard for three decades. But these machines were far too bulky and large and expensive for home use. In the late 1960s, Sony began working on a home video recorder that would be easy to operate. This required them to develop a videotape cassette and design an automatic loading mechanism. By 1968, a prototype was demonstrated using three quarter inch tape inside a video cassette. The VO 1600 was the first ever VCR. It contained a tuner timer able to record off the air TV, including wood panel sidings, it was designed for the home market, but it was a dismal failure. I don't know the exact price, but it was not very well sold. The VO2600 did not have a tuner, and these were industrial units, and these units were very popular. I had two of these. Not sure what happened to them. Might still be in a closet somewhere. Broadcast Television fell in love with Umatic, and they all had editing bays like this throughout the 70s and 80s and into the 90s. In the 1970s, electronic news gathering replaced film, and this is what really allowed Umatic to dominate TV production until it was replaced by another failed home format turned pro called Betacam. But that's a topic for another video. The only people left today with Umatic are video transfer facilities, enthusiasts, and like this room here at NASA. So this is the Umatic cassette, the very first ever video tape cassette. So there are some things about this that are very similar to all the video tape cassettes that have followed, and there are some things that are different. I'm going to start with the things that are the same. We have a take up reel and a supply reel. There's a hub on here. There are two hubs, take up reel, supply reel. There's a door here that opens to reveal where the tape is. There's an interlock. It prevents the door from opening. But once open, it reveals the tape that is pulled out of the mechanism and wrapped around the drum. That's consistent with how videotapes operate today. Now I'll go over some of the differences. The biggest difference you'll see right away, take up reel and the supply reel overlap. Now Beta, which came after this, also does that, but VHS does not. And also that's unusual is that the take up reel has a flange on the top. The supply reel has a flange on the bottom. It is unusual to see them flanged that way. VHS is flanged on both sides, but having them flanged this way is kind of unusual. These hubs are smooth bore. The only way that the mechanism can grab the tape is through these three holes. And the biggest thing that's unusual is that these turn in opposite directions. Because the reels turn in the opposite directions, the take-up reel feeds like this, the supply reel feeds here, so there's a very narrow window. There's only one finger that comes in and grabs the tape, and so there's not enough room under here 
for there to be any other additional support. So you have this little flap. Notice that these wheels are free to turn. There's no hub lock. The case itself has a tab that goes into those holes that prevents it from turning. When you remove the tape from the case, these hubs are free to turn. This little tab is the record prevention tab. This little tab, you remove it, recording is prevented, you reinstall it, you can record again. They usually provide a place for you to put that tab inside the case. If you lose it, it's just lost. It's very similar to every tape that you've ever seen, but the fact that the wheels turn in opposite directions and, it, and the tape goes in an opposite path from what you would think. You normally would expect the take-up reel to be on the right, but it's on the left, and it winds in this direction, and this one unwinds in this direction. This is a 30-minute tape. Most of these, I don't think, I think the maximum these cassettes could hold was an hour. That was one of the things that caused this to fail as a consumer format, as the tapes were relatively bulky and they only held an hour's worth of tape and consumers were not interested and Sony turned their attention immediately to industrial and broadcasting use. So when, when Umatic failed in the home market in 1971, Sony immediately went to work on developing the Betamax format, which debuted in 1975, so the, only four years after they developed the U-Matic, they developed the, the Betamax. You can see how much larger this is. Beta reincarnated itself into a, a professional format, into Betacam, and later digital Betacam, which was very popular. And in the same way, U-Matic failed as a home format, reinvented itself as a professional format. I said well into the 90s in the open, but in reality, I have a tape here from May of 2000. Movie studios were distributing tapes on U-Matic. This was a, a trailer for Mission Impossible 2. Well into the 2000s, movie studios were still distributing to TV stations movie trailers, and other information on Umatic tapes.
We have here a quad tape. It's called quad because across the two inch width, the video head spins at a 90 degree angle with four heads on it at over 14,000 RPM. In NTSC, that's 960 stripes per second are written to the tape. And the machines themselves had a compressor and a vacuum pump. It used an air bearing on the head because it was spinning at such a high rate of speed. And it used a vacuum pump to hold the tape up against the head. And it used all of that because the circular head was moving at a 90 degree angle to the tape. Modern VCRs use a helical scanning in which the tape can wrap around the head without using compression or vacuum. We have here the U-Matic S, which is the small version of the U-Matic. What's interesting is that the hubs are exactly the same size apart. There's a groove here and a little funnel. The large machines can actually play the small cassette without needing an adapter. Now the small tape was developed so that portable machines could be made smaller and that was what made ENG popular. Really cool that it can play the small tape and the large tape without needing an, an adapter. That's pretty neat. And so there you have it. Umatic. Introduced in 1971 as a consumer format, after that failed, it re-emerged as a professional format. Television and broadcast embraced it for decades. The very first VCR ever was a spectacular success. I still have a working one, which is pretty amazing. If you found this helpful, if you liked it, please hit the like or subscribe button and thank you for watching.